Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Book Review. So, in this episode, we're going to be talking about deep learning and XAI techniques for anomaly detection. So, most of you guys heard of deep learning, right? There's a model, you give training data, and it does some prediction. And we could get it very accurate by fine tuning. XAI here actually is short for explainable artificial intelligence, which is referring to the type of techniques, skills, algorithms, principles that people use to try to explain a neural network model. Now, that's interesting, right? Because what does that have anything to do with anomaly detection? So that's going to be the question that this book is going to answer that we're about to review today. So with that being said, let's get things started. The first thing I want to say is the foreword of this book. It's actually written by Jeff Barr. He's the VP and Chief Evangelist from AWS, which is really great because when I was in grad school, I was actually in the field of XAI, explainable AI. So I promised myself that if I ever make it into the industry and become a data scientist, I definitely want to contribute to the community by delivering more algorithms and more materials to explain models. And that's partially why I'm here today. And I'm just very grateful to see that Jeff is in support of this title, and he's really put on a lot of faith and conviction for this book that's being published right now. So I want to tell you guys from the bottom of my heart that you're in good hands. And this book really is a combination of a lot of effort from a lot of people. So speaking of the people who created this book, let's start with the author. So the author of this book, her name is Cher Simon. Cher, you're an amazing person. I saw your profile that you're a solution architect delivering enterprise level data-driven solutions for AWS clients. For us personally, my team and my colleagues, we are definitely loyal users of AWS service. We use AWS on a day-to-day -day basis. So we know what the process look like and we know what the pain spots are. And let me just say this, as a person and also a representation of the work that I do, I'm truly grateful to know about you, to learn about your work, especially knowing that there's a group of amazing people just like yourself at AWS helping us institutional clients to build these amazing models that drive the AI first solutions in the industry. That's amazing. Let's talk about that, right? So for the viewers of this video, Cher actually has 20 plus years of experience in this field. And she's been working with so many different clients. She know what the pain spots are. And on top of that, how and why we should be doing explainability when it comes to AI. And then in addition, she's also very passionate about this field. And reading this book, reading these chapters in this book, I can feel her passion that she's not doing this for the money. This is really a work coming out of someone that's passion driven that's done a lot of public research, write a lot of articles on public forum, AWS conferences, things like that. So it's a great honor to be doing this video to review her book for you guys. So when it comes to XAI, right, where does work come from? We actually have to start by talking about the story from DARPA. So if you haven't heard of DARPA, DARPA is short for Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or also short for DARPA. So this concept was actually originated from a DARPA article. That it's saying that, hey, look, we got easy model, we got complicated models. It turned out that the complicated models have high performance, whereas easy model have subpar performances. So right off the bat, you can kind of draw this XY chart or xy coordinate of a plot and you can have the x-axis to be how complex the model is whereas the y-axis to be the performance of the model and then you have your conventional machine learning model such as linear regression logistic regression and then eventually you move to 
random forest, support vector machine, and then the past 10, 20 years, we have neural networks, deep learning, that sort of thing. And when you plot them out, you realize that they kind of fall on this curve where it goes pretty much from top left to bottom right. And it's actually very difficult for a machine learning algorithm to have high performance and high explainability. So that x-axis you can also think of explainability or how easy it is to interpret this work of a model. In other words, on this x-y coordinates, you barely see any algorithm falls on the top right corner. Now that's a problem, right? What if someone wanna use this algorithm? They have no idea how this works. They can only rely on the results and treat what's going inside of the algorithm as a black box. Now that makes it difficult for two reasons. One, you're blindly making up protocols based on the prediction performance. And two, if things go wrong, you will have no way of fact checking this. So you don't really know how to improve yourself. So due to these two reasons, there's a lot of needs and demands in the industry right now to develop groundbreaking XAI techniques to use and apply on these algorithms to make it go off the top flight corner. And that's precisely the whole thesis of this book. So a couple of famous algorithms that you're going to see in this book, Shapley value, right? That's definitely one of the most important thing that you have to know. When it comes to images, we have our good old school CAM, class activation map, and it's advanced version gradient CAM. And then when it comes to gradient boosting or neural networks or these fancy gradient boost algorithms, we also have LIME, local interpretable model for explanations. So all these models are out there, all these algorithms are available, and this book is going to give you an in-depth discussion of how these algorithms work and how they can be applied on different data types across a variety of different experiments. So another amazing thing about the PAC publisher is that it has complementary GitHub repo where I can just go online, clone the notebooks, and I can kind of dive into the code directly myself. So here, I'm going to go on Colab to show you guys what a sample code look like. So I'm here in my Colab environment, and all I was doing was I cloned the GitHub repo, I put it in my Google Drive, and then I just save it in this directory where I know where it is, and I can just install the requirements. So boom, there you go. You can install it and you have all the libraries that you can use and you import them and you can just start running the code. So in this particular notebook, I actually dig it out from chapter three of this book. It's actually investigating this data set called export food. So it's a CSV file in an Excel spreadsheet. I can load it up and there's a review and as well as the ratings. The review is a bunch of paragraphs, right? somebody wrote something about the food product, and then it gives a rating. The rating is out of five levels, one, two, three, four, five. And that's what the data set look like. So the goal is simple. The goal is to build a model to learn from these reviews, which are texts and languages, and simply trying to understand what it's talking about. And then on top of that, not only does the model need to get the ratings predicted correctly, but also need to understand and interpret what are the important words, phrases in these paragraphs that explain the ratings that this reviewer produced in the end. So first thing to do is let's take a look at the data. So you plot it out. This is kind of what the data look like. Let's zoom in a little bit. For example, you can read off the paragraphs. I've been ordering this product monthly for over a year. These past few shipments have been off and the packaging is different. It is obviously they're from two different manufacturers. The full bottle is the imposter and has no pink ribbon on the label. The label photo is different. And if you look at the bottle, you can see on the back that the legitimate product has 3% juice content label on the back up top. And the imposter 
has 1%. And then so on and so forth, it explains how different the two products are, and it gives a rating. So now you can kind of read off this paragraph, and humans such as you and me will have a little bit of understanding, say, so this reviewer probably doesn't like this product that much. So the rating is kind of low. Now, that's interesting, right? Because we read the content, we interpret from word to word, and we kind of get the idea that this person is frustrated about this content. Now, the goal here is to see, hey, can AI understand this frustration? And if yes, it can understand, how does it get there? So how do we do it, right? When you're trying to explain a model, you got to have a model first, right? You got to have a model, you got to train the model. So let's talk about that. Here, we have your usual TensorFlow Keras model. So we load up the library, and we have a very simple model here with the input layer, an embedding layer. Embedding layer serves as a function to translate your word into vectors. And when you have a many words, you translate into many vectors together, and that becomes a matrix. So from here, you have a matrix, and then you have a dropout layer. Uh, so that serves the purpose to prevent overfitting. And then in addition, you have a global average pooling, which, which simply takes the average of a local area. You have another dropout layer, which further prevents overfitting. And then you have your conventional neural network layer or dense layers. In the end, you produce softmax, which gives you that final prediction in probability distributions. So that's it, right? It's not that complicated of a model. You can design this in a few lines of code, and you compile it, and boom, you have your model. So then what I did here was to train a model. And then once I train the model, I pick out a sample. And look at the sample here. Love having this shipped to me instead of hauling it from the store, good price when you subscribe and save. Let's take a look at this explainer, which uses the model that we just trained and come up with a score to explain each and every word in the sentence and how that's affecting the final prediction outcome. And then in addition, let's not forget the ground truth, right? So the rating is one. And for those of you who don't know Python, in Python, if you want the first element, it's actually zero. So that is why here in this visualization, when you plot out this visualization to explain how much each word affect the final prediction using Shapley value, this output here is zero. That means the first class. So it's actually accurate. It's exactly one. Now that we know this is accurate, right? The prediction is on the spot. What do we know about the words? Well, we have a bunch of words in the sentence, right? Love having this shipped to me instead of hauling it from the store, blah, blah, blah. That's a sentence, okay? The good thing about this type of visualization in this chapter is that if you hover your mouse on top of these entries, these color-coded words on this visualization, a value pops up. And that's precisely the Shapley value. So I can look at the negative case, and then these will be the words that brings the prediction more to the negative side, right? So lower the probability that it's that class, right? So say instead, price, you know, sub, all these words. Or on top, right, if you're going to the positive side, what are the words that increase the probability, right? You have love, good, you, and so on and so forth. And then that might sound a little bit abstract because you're going to have to move around your mouse, right? But you also have this visualization down here that puts everything in a sentence, and you can simply just hover your mouse above that, and it will give you the corresponding visualization on that bar here above. Like for example, this word love, it has a value of 0.393 on the minus sign. Now I can probably put it here and I can see that number pops up on that bar above. So since it's a blue color, then that goes to the positive side. And you can kind of see, ah, the word love, that brings the prediction up a little bit. Having this shift, shift is here, that brings the prediction to the minus sign. And instead, instead of kind of like a transition, right? So obviously that's very important, right? 0.44, that's kind of like a relatively high value comparing with the other values, right? So something like that, it's important to know. 
and then so on and so forth. You can read out the rest of the sentence and their color coding for each and every word to show you which direction that the prediction is leaning towards, left or right. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I thought this was a fun visualization for you to check it out. If you're interested, follow the video, follow the channel. There's more video to come. And if you do like the content, give a like and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.